Apple, and I am super curious about Apple this week. What, what are your thoughts, Kay? Awesome. Thanks, Nate. Um, yeah, so I got Apple and Amazon this week. They both report earnings on Thursday. Um, Apple, as we know, I think, I'm not sure, Microsoft is also, I think, at the same level. I, I, I mean, they are neck to neck in the market cap standpoint, so I don't have the latest one who is larger, but they both report earnings Tuesday and Thursday, respectively, Microsoft and Apple. So it, Apple is in a very, you know, interesting place. And the reason I, before, you know, Apple is the largest holding in my portfolio. So, of course, I don't want Apple to go down or crash or, you know, burn uh, like many others, because this is also in pretty much every ETF for uh, mutual funds, for institutional investors, pretty much the largest holding in most people's portfolio, whether right. you have it directly or indirectly. So, interestingly, the consensus price target on Apple, you know, if you do a, a consensus, it's about $200 or so. And we are only three and a half or closer to 4%, you know, away from that all time high. So the stock has been pretty much, you know, trending at that level for a while now. Now, generally the implied move is about $8 or so. So you could pretty much hit the all time high of $200 in no time uh, post earnings. So that is generally the, the setup that we see. Now, uh, you may have not seen this news if you don't follow Apple closely, but there are two main, you know, back issues that are happening with Apple. And that is throwing water on this whole situation. So one is that Apple is now slow, going to allow developers to use additional payment methods. That is going to impact, that could impact their uh, potential revenue from services, which is that what they charge 30%. And I think now they decided to de decrease that to 27%. Uh, I forget the split. I think it's 12% for small developers and 15 um, and 30, 27% for the large developers. That's the first issue, which most people probably would know. The second would actually impact Google because it seems like that Google is getting pressure of getting into a lawsuit with antitrust that um, how Google pays Apple about 15, 14, 15 dollars, billion dollars a year to use Google as the default uh, search couple, engine. Couple billion. Couple billion, yeah. So they are getting into this lawsuit uh, or a lawsuit that is coming up is that this is killing competition and you know app, uh, Google should not be paying money to other, uh, you know, big tech so that the competition remains as is. Now, if that lawsuit happens, you know, you would see some kind of an impact on both Google and Apple because, again, that's a revenue that Apple gets from Google. Uh, that's a pretty decent chunk of money for the year. And then, of course, you know, looking at your four straight quarters of revenue decline, um, you know, you always have Apple bears that there is no new innovation. Uh, you got a Vision Pro. Uh, you got some negative news that, uh, Netflix and YouTube and those apps are not coming on that. So there's a, just a lot of news around Apple and Apple is the, one of the most watched tickers across the board. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be touching Apple at this level. First of all, even if I'm trading, I would just let the earnings play out and see how it plays out. And also you know, it's pretty detached from all the moving averages. Um, you know, you see the 200, we did see a 200 bounce on the 200 a moving average. So I like that level of 180. But I think it's too extended at this point. So the upside potential and downside risk. So downside risk overweighs the upside potential for me for Apple. So I would not be getting involved in this stock or at the trade until the earnings settles and we see a guidance. Because if they give a weak guidance or a lukewarm guidance, you could see S&P 500 going down in no time. No doubt. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, I think I mean the last three. I think at least the, at least the last three um, earnings reports from Apple have been quite underwhelming. Um, the numbers you, you've reflected that obviously in your your, your fifth point there. Um, so I think you're right. I'm going to be sitting on my hands here, and which is, I don't really trade Apple generally, um, but I'm looking forward to the earnings report and see if they can actually spring a surprise, something like you say, like a good guidance going ahead. Um, the chart for me, again, like you say, was a bit extended. I do like the fact it's above all moving averages. Um, and obviously above that kind of volume profile as well. So I think that's bullish, and obviously that's kind of tied in with the spiral QQQ we talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, we'll wait for the, the earnings report on Thursday. So interestingly enough, this might be one of the spots where I would take a trade ahead of earnings. And uh, I I like Apple long-term. It's an investment, obviously. You know, obviously it drives the markets, like you said, K spot on there. Um, and I don't trade it too often in the near term, but you know, what, 
what I'm hearing is a lot of negative sentiment out there and a lot of like, hey, we're at all these crazy, you know, highs again. And if you look at the chart, it rolled over a little bit last week. So um, that being said, this 192 level, if it holds up, right, and then we reverse course and take off above 200. I mean, if that happens on some catalyst, if there's some news that is, you know, super bullish and gets going, that's a cup and handle that's going to break, basically. And uh, the upside could be pretty large. So I think it's high risk reward because we are at, at these high levels. Like this is not a, a slam dunk A plus setup. But I bet you you could get in at fairly decent uh, option prices at the 200, 202 kind of level and uh, see see how it plays out. Um, again, high risk, so I wouldn't put a ton of capital towards that. Um, but just a thought, you know, looking at the chart. Contrarian, possibly. No, no, I, I, I totally understand why you are saying that. Um, so would you be, like, willing to get into a trade between Monday and Wednesday? Or do yeah. you? Okay. Yeah, like if it holds 192 and is just sitting there flat on Monday, I think that would be a very interesting good good spot. signal for you. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Like if, even if it dipped a little bit, recovered and got back above 192, um, it would look like you know a little. There's some buyers there, and maybe get in with them and see what happens. But I mean, yeah, you can do a iron condor on this one. Oh, that's very interesting. So explain that a little bit, Kay. I mean, I haven't thought about the, I just, when you said you want to trade it, I'm like, you can do probably iron condor. So you basically, you know, you want the stock price to be in that range. If it goes beyond that range, because you're doing, you're playing both on the call side and the put side, right? So your iron condor, so just, you want the stock to trade in that range, whatever, you know, you choose between buying, selling on the put side, buying, selling on the call side, whatever yeah. range you're putting. If your stock is within that range, that's when you make the money. But if the stock goes on either direction beyond that, then the chances of you, then you will be start to lose money. So, I mean, Iron Condor could be one. I mean, I'll take a look into the Iron Condor, see what would be a good setup for Iron Condor. I generally don't play that because I've always lost on Iron Condors. <laughs> that is not, so I, I'm, not, I'm not a good one on Iron Condor. But yeah, that that could be one possibility if you yeah, want. You can definitely take advantage of some uh, trading strategies with options to play like what you're saying, just a movement sideways, right? And then I don't usually uh, trade the iron condor, but what I can tell you is that you can adjust it as you go, right? So if you do get a break one way or another, you can take positions on and off within the, these option strategies and it allows you to take advantage. Too much detail to get into on you know our hour-long uh, discussion here today, but a great topic to dive into. So uh, maybe we get into that on a future space, uh, future uh, podcast for sure. Yep. Um, different option strategies, always interesting. 